in this video i will show you a circuit example in which we have to apply super mesh analysis and the circuit will contain a dependent source see here in the circuit between this mesh and this mesh i have a dependent current source i1 and this i1 is a current that is flowing through this 10 ohm resistor and we have to find out the voltage drop v3 using mesh analysis as the circuit contains a current source that means we do we have to apply super mesh analysis not mesh analysis for voltage v3 this terminal will be positive and this terminal will be negative and the voltage that is dropped across this 40 ohm will be our v3 so in first step we have to identify the total number of mesh here see here the circuit will have only three meshes let's say this is our a terminal b terminal c terminal d terminal e terminal therefore a b c d e a will represent mesh one after that let's say this is our f terminal c f d c it will be our mesh number two after that d f e d it will be our mesh number three these are the three possible meshes in this circuit so at first i have to denote the loop currents in the loop here i will denote the loop currents in the clockwise direction so in this loop i will get our i1 here in this clockwise direction in this loop i will assume our loop current i2 in clockwise direction and in this mesh i will assume our mesh current i3 in clockwise direction after indicating the after indicating the mesh currents i will show the polar i will mark the polarity of the resistors see in case of this 10 ohm this i1 will be entering from this direction therefore this terminal should be positive and this terminal should be negative in case of this 20 ohm resistor see i1 will be flowing from this direction therefore this terminal should be positive and this terminal should be negative in this side me inside mesh 2 you will see i2 will be entering from this direction therefore this terminal should be positive this terminal should be negative in case of this 30 ohm see i1 will be entering from this direction in mesh 1 so this terminal should be positive this terminal should be negative in case of this i3 it will be entering from this direction in 30 ohm in mesh 3 therefore this terminal should be positive this terminal should be negative in case of this 40 ohm see current will be entering from this direction i3 therefore this terminal will be positive and this terminal will be negative and we have to apply super mesh analysis to calculate this voltage drop v3 here now look between mesh 2 and mesh 3 here you will see we have a dependent source connected between mesh 2 and mesh 3 therefore if i remove this dependent current source between these two meshes therefore if i merge the mesh 2 and mesh 3 i will get a super mesh okay so in after that after removing this dependent current source and merging the mesh 2 and mesh 3 for super mesh i will apply kcl at the terminal associated with all the currents in the super mesh that means this i2 will be entering from this direction this dependent current will supply current in this direction and this i3 will be leaving in this direction therefore see here i have the loop currents i2 i3 and also the dependent source and also the current source current 15 i1 therefore as they as all of them are associated with our super mesh therefore i will apply kcl at this terminal see in this circuit i have removed my current source that was previously attached in our circuit which was 15 i 1 and that is in that was incoming in this node okay this will be our super mesh see i have merged mesh 2 and mesh 3 okay and this will form our super mesh now in my next step i will apply kcl at this terminal here i will apply kcl and you'll see at this terminal we will have the loop currents i2 will be incoming in from this direction and i3 will be 
outgoing in this direction and 15 i1 will be entering from this direction see here we don't have to consider the i1 current because it is outside of our super mesh and here we have 15 i1 the current source current and the loop currents therefore here i will apply kcl if i apply kcl here you will see i2 will be incoming and 15 i1 will be incoming summation of incoming currents i2 plus 15 i1 will be the sum of outgoing currents i3 if i take all the quantities in one side i will get 15 i1 plus i2 minus i3 will be equal to zero and this will be our equation number one i have applied kcl at the junction or node f in my next step i will apply kvl at the super mesh here the c the loop c f e d c c f e d c will form our super mesh now i will apply kvl into super mesh at first i will encounter this 30 volt source therefore and its negative terminal therefore its voltage will be positive plus 30 after that i will encounter this 40 ohm resistor and its positive terminal therefore its voltage will be negative see as only current i3 is flowing through this 40 ohm therefore i will get minus 40 i3 after that i will encounter this 30 ohm and its positive terminal therefore its voltage will be negative and see from this direction i have current i3 and from this direction i have loop current that is outside of this super mesh i1 so i will assume i3 will be greater than i1 i will take i i3 minus i1 after that i will encounter this 20 ohm resistor and its positive terminal therefore its voltage will be also negative see in case of this 20 ohm this i2 will be entering from this direction and this i1 will be leaving from this direction so i have i can write i2 minus i1 will be equal to zero now i will simplify this equation So this will be our equation number 2. After applying KVL into our super mesh, I will apply KVL to rest of the meshes. Here we are left with only our mesh number 1. Therefore I will apply KVL in mesh 1. That means I will apply KVL to mesh 1. 1 means A, B, C, D, E a mesh here at first i will encounter this 80 volt source and its negative terminal therefore its voltage will be positive after that i will encounter this 10 ohm resistor and its positive terminal therefore its voltage will be negative 10 i 
one after that i will encounter this 20 ohm resistor and its positive terminal therefore i will take its negative sign you see i2 will be in flowing in this direction and i1 will be flowing in this direction as i am in loop number one therefore i will assume i1 will be greater than i2 so i will take i1 minus i2 after that i will encounter this 30 ohm resistor and its positive polarity therefore its voltage will be minus 30 see i1 will be entering from this direction and i3 will be leaving from this direction as they are in opposite direction therefore i will take i1 minus i3 and that will be equal to zero now i will simplify this equation If I if I simplify the equation, I will get minus 60 I1 plus 20 I2 plus 30 I3 will be equal to minus 80. Now, if I solve my this first, second, and third equation for our loop currents, I will get. If I solve our equation number one, two, and three. I will get I1 equal to 0 0.58 ampere I2 equal to minus 6.15 ampere and I3 equal to 2.60 ampere see I have calculated I3 equal to 2.60 ampere now i have to calculate the voltage that is dropped across this 40 ohm resistor see if i want to calculate v3 i have to know the value of current that is flowing through this 40 ohm resistor and that is here i3 and the value of resistor is 40 i3 is 2.6 resistor has a value of 40 ohm therefore at the end i will get a value of 104 volt that's it thank you